Hey everybody, uh, it's Presidential Terrace here, back with an exciting video. I'm back here at Bach Tower Gardens, it's been a while since I've been here. So thought, you know what, come up here and do some filming, and just um, show you some random stuff. Uh, you hear the uh, singing tower right now in the background, which you could just see from here, show you. Anyways, I'm going to try to make it up there today. Of course, see all these pretty flowers. It's really cool. See a lot of those little lizards around. Cool sunflower. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a pretty cool day, I think. So I, have, I still have a few hours before they close, so. Let me show you this front here. I really like the front, it's really cool looking. I'll show you this. I always like this fountain part. I think this front courtyard part architecture is really um very pretty looking. Kind of Roman like in my opinion. Look at those cool frogs shooting out the water, I always like that. It's probably one of my favorite places here, the way it is with the fountain. I always like it. And, show you who's back. The um, alligator statue. He was gone for a while. They were exhibiting him somewhere else, but they brought him back. Which is pretty cool. So I'm happy to see him back. Awesome. Just gonna show you some random stuff. Um, we'll see how it goes. And um, just, just onward and upward, I guess. All right, see you all in a second.
walk around to the front of the tower. <laughs> Of course, you gotta go back up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will be going back up. Unfortunately, my encore today is writing my thesis, which oh. is uh, oh. as enjoyable for you all as it is for me. So, well, uh, do you have time for a couple of questions? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, hit me. Okay, so that nothing is a silly question, right? No, ma'am. Nothing okay, at all. So, where up on the tower yeah. is, is the organ? Yeah. So, I am sitting, uh, you see where the tower goes from square in profile to sort of octagonal in profile? Okay. Uh, so, where, where the octagonal profile begins is where the belfry is, and we sit very right at the very bottom of that, of that level. So, do you climb stairs to get there? So there are stairs. You can climb the stairs, and and sometimes if I'm feeling like uh, feeling like I earned it, uh, maybe I'll climb the stairs. But usually I take the elevator. Oh, there is okay. an elevator. Yeah, there there is an elevator. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So there's a. It's the oldest operating, continuously operating elevator in the state. Actually, oh, uh, it was wow. put in, in in 1927 under the supervision of, of Mr. Otis himself. He was here when they put As it. As an down. Otis elevator. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Well, you know, people say that, but I, I figure I got the same philosophy with old elevators as I do with old airplanes, right? You never want to fly in a new airplane because, you know, it could crash any time. You fly in an 80 year old airplane, that thing hasn't crashed yet. That's the safest one around, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, modern engineering. That's right. Although, you know, I do have to say it's very well maintained, you know, modern yeah, inspection, right. of course. Right. But, uh, I used to be a pilot. Yeah, no, yeah. There's a map in there if you want to do it. Why planes crash? Yeah. I can tell you why, but you know, the FAA is so bad. What is it? Why are they crashing? I'm saying exactly what it is. Yeah, we won. Okay, you come in during a storm. Yeah. There's a storm hit the spring. There's a fog. Yeah. You come in. The next thing you know, too high. You're too high for it. You're going to go off the end. And that happens. Now, when it's straight down there low, and it stays down there low, you're coming in, you're in there and all, all at once, too low. And the reason is the beam that they send up. If you watch it, two years ago, watch it at the TV set. Uh -huh. And you know, well, you didn't know the storm would come in from the west, and you get a lousy picture. But if you turn to the west, and you turn it down, you get a stronger signal from that, because that signal was bent. Ah. And they still go. Huh. Well. I, years yet they'll come up with <laughs> I tell people, so I, I originally started in college as an aerospace engineering major, mm. and I tell people that one way or another I got off the ground. So luckily we don't have to deal with that kind of problem exactly off this type you know, of ground. I didn't pay ground, attention to the instrument set. I mean, you know, it was a storm. Right, right. I knew where I was going. Go, go in. Yeah, yeah, I gotta say, except for my airplane analogy, all that stuff is above my pay grade. <laughs> so, but I'm happy to answer more questions about the Carillon. <laughs> so, 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 what was that song with the songs that you were playing? What, yeah. what were so I played a bunch of them. Um, they may they may have been out of the programs already by the time by this part of the day. But um, so the first three, uh, let's see, what did I start with? The very first piece uh, was called Lake Wales Nocturne and was written for, for this instrument. Is that the one o'clock or three o'clock time? That is the three o'clock time. That's, that's the first, what we the heard. One we yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah, so that was the very first one you heard. So that was written for this caroline. Okay. Um, the second three pieces were from uh, a work with six movements, but I've selected three movements from there um, mm -hmm. by a guy called Ronald Barnes, who was a really prolific Carillon composer. So that was by him. Um, then you probably heard uh, Hotel California. Well, I hope you were able to pick it out. Hotel California and, uh, let's see, what was the second one? Mrs. Robinson. Mrs. Robinson, that's right, thank you. And then, uh, oh, sweet Caroline. Sweet Caroline, that's right. And then I improvised on it. On yes. so that, that was what I played today. So some stuff written for Carillon and some stuff that just kind of light music. Okay. So Caroline means bells, right? Yes, yeah, so uh, so our definition of Carillon is at least 23 fixed tuned bells played by a traditional baton clavier. Um, so 
some places have what we would term non-traditional carillons, where they're bronze bells like we have here, but maybe played from piano keyboard, um, electromagnetic. So we play completely mechanically. We don't have any any kind of assist of any kind. Wow. No pneumatic, no magnets, nothing like that. Yeah, so um, so our, our smallest bell, and we're only moving the clappers, but our smallest bell weighs about 16 pounds. Mm -hmm. Our biggest bell uh, weighs 11.7 tons, so like 23,500 tons. Wow. So um, even though we're only moving the clapper, the great big bell has a great big 400 pound cast iron clapper, and so that we have a pedal board as well. And so obviously using your legs, you've got a lot more mass in your legs yeah. than in your arm. And that big bell, what's the note? So it's, <laughs> it rings a low F. Uh, okay. No, I take that back, it rings a low E flat. So we actually have a transposing carillon. So on the piano, when you play a C, you hear a C, naturally. Okay. Um, Carillons work a little differently, and so there's not like a standard transposition. Some work that way too. You play a C, you get a C. Here you play a C, you get a B flat. So, and it's a it's a whole thing. But <laughs> okay, how did you start playing this thing in junior high? They had a carillon. Yeah, that's right. They had flat, carillon right? day at junior high school. No, so uh, so I went to school at the University of Florida, and uh, as I mentioned, I was an aerospace engineering major. But I arrived on campus and. Uh, I had to make the choice between calculus and carillon, so I chose the more fun one. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no. So I, I heard it on campus, and, and have always been attracted to you know sort of uh, strange instruments. I've played bagpipes in high school, and I've you know played played a bunch of stuff. And, uh, so I heard it and and thought that that was pretty cool. It was unlike anything I'd heard before, and yeah. so I thought I need to I need to learn how to play this. So. Yeah. How many bells are up there? So there are 60 bells in this carillon. Um, the number of bells is interesting with carillons because it doesn't necessarily reflect the size of the carillon. So we have 60 bells here. In, in Gainesville, where I learned, there are 61 bells. However, this is a much bigger carillon. If you melted down all of the bells in Gainesville, all 61 bells, you could make about one and a half of just the biggest bell here. Wow. So these bells, um, although there are fewer in number, they're much more in the bass range and the profile, so how thick any given bell is for the same pitch is much thicker here. And so that gives a much uh, more resonant sound, a much richer and lasts a lot longer uh, than the bells in Gainesville. Um, but as a result, the bells in Gainesville were not as expensive as these bells, but money was really no object when, when they were building them. So when Mr. Bach built this, are the bells made in the United States? Where did they come from? So um, the carillons are only cast uh, just by a, a handful of firms in the world, uh, most of them, at least at that time, were in Holland and uh, Belgium. So, however, these are English bells, uh, which have that thicker profile, like I was talking about typically, whereas Dutch and Belgian bells had thinner profiles. Um, so these were cast in Loughborough, England, which is about halfway between London and Birmingham, England, um, in 1927. Then they were put on a ship in London and shipped to Jacksonville. In Jacksonville, they were put on a series of specially outfitted flatbed rail cars, shipped into town, and then put on the flatbed rudimentary semi trucks, essentially, and brought up the hill, brought into the tower from where the fireplace is now on that side of the tower because it wasn't completed yet, and hoisted up through the middle of the tower. Um, so if they ever had to take them out for any reason, for instance, bells stay in tune. They're tuned when they're made, and they stay in tune for about uh, 300 years, usually at least. Wow. Um, and so unfortunately, 210 years from now, if they need to retune them, I don't know how they're going to get them out of there because there's stuff all in the tower, and of course the tower is completed now. So I guess they would have to remove the tiling at the top and remove them that way, but I don't know. I'm, I'm glad I won't be here when that happens. <laughs> when just play out of tune. Well, yeah, that's your, that's your other option. <laughs> when Mr. Bach built this tower, was that the main goal, is to have it as a bell tower? Yes, yes, that was intended from the beginning. So um, he was an immigrant from Holland, and so he remembered the carol on from his youth and, and wanted to make that part of, of the gardens. Wow. And when you play, I mean, is it really hot in there? I mean, do you have, do you have natural <laughs> so ventilation? It was really hot in there today because, uh, and I was cursing his name, uh-oh. I was cursing his name uh, as I came down the stairs, but the full-time caroliner here is from Belgium, actually. Um, but he loves it really hot, which is funny because in Belgium it's cold, like, all the time. <laughs> uh, well, not cold, cold, but, like, 50 degrees a lot of the year. Anyway, so he cranked the thermostat way up, and uh, so I was sweating while I was up there playing. In fact, my, by the end, my hands were slipping off the keys because I was. But uh, but normally it's not. It is climate control. So. Thank you very much. What is your doctorate in? You said you're doing a book on your. Thesis? So I'm, I'm just working on my master's, but it's in it's in music. So it's it's on shape note singing, which is a, a historical American type of music. And if you were a Caroliner, am I saying that right? Caroliner. Mm -hmm. Caroliner. 
is this like the ultimate place to play? Yeah, uh, uh, here, here tells the story. So he had won the major Caroline competition by the time he was 17, had his own tower in Antwerp, which is like a major job. Uh, and his father, who was also a Carol nurse, said, well, you know, as a graduation present of sorts, I'm going to take you to play the best Carolina on earth. And you brought him here from wow. Belgium, which is, you know, like the, the cradle of it. So, wow. um, so yeah, a lot of a lot of people think very highly, myself included, of this, this tower and this Carolina. Well, awesome. thank you, and we truly well, enjoyed it. Well, so I'm so glad you appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Any hurricane damage? No, ma well, actually, so this great big window here was broken during the storm um but that's all the tower was fine dirty yes ma'am it's uh sorry i'm a, I'm a man i can only do one thing now. um uh, um it uh um yeah so the tower was built to withstand 200 mile an hour winds so okay. hurricanes are, are pretty much we're pretty much impervious to those Okay. Do you have a business card? No ma'am, I'm sorry, I don't because I don't have a full time gig yet and so I don't There's the famous gold door. And I actually been in there at the bottom level once years ago. Hopefully, eventually, one day, hope to get in there again. And right there, see those flowers? That is where um, Bach himself is buried, right there. Beautiful place, I gotta tell you that. There's some cool quay fish in there. And they have a little uh, thing over there at the dispenser where you could buy some fish or um, food for them. If that's your thing. Wanted to show you this cool um, Japanese stone lantern today. I actually filmed it, I think I filmed it once before, but um, it's been a long time. Here's a little plaque for it. And it's right down this cool little path to it. I see another one of these stone lanterns at um, Cypress Gardens. There are some smaller ones, and um, Disney. Well, I gotta be careful. There's a spider web there. Doesn't look like there's anything in it. Go down. But uh, one of, there was one at Disney too at the Japanese Pavilion. Memorial gift presented to the sanctuary as a tribute to Edward Bach by W. Tishitia of Tokyo, Japan, uh, January 19, say 55. Pretty cool. We didn't pay close attention to when see it's just nestled into this little spot. So I'm I'm assuming it's been this exact spot since 1955. Just think, your this is history right here. Think about it. Um, they must have had like a little presentation ceremony. I'm sure they probably had some dignitaries here. And I'm sure there's photographs taken. I'm gonna have to look it up and see. Of course, when they dedicated the whole sanctuary with a tower when President Coolidge was here with his wife. They're charged some photographs from that too. I really need to find them and somehow um, show them with a video one time. But this is history at your fingertips. Really cool. Wasn't sure if I was able to film this. I had um, well, I might have to stop again, again because that's, uh, it's been raining. This is not a waterproof camera. So hopefully the rain will stay away for a while. I was able to meet the Carolina, that's what I filmed before this. But I guess during certain days and times, you could sit here, here, and there's a monitor there, and you can actually watch the performance live, which is pretty cool. And the tower's right over there. I want to show this cool thing. I filmed it before. And I'm assuming they have like weddings or ceremonies here. I think the way it looks, it used to be a fountain or something at one time, too. The kiss of the sun for pardon, the song of the birds for mirth. You're nearer God's heart in a garden than anywhere else on earth. Uh, 
this is pretty cool. See, I think the way this is, water must have used to come out there or something. Just go in there, and then that one thing would be like a drain right there. A very pretty place. A tribute to Edward William Bach from the neighbors of Mountain Lake Park. Not exactly sure what year it was. I'm sure, if you'd read that. This summit upon which the, this resting place stands is about 324 feet above sea level. It's the highest point of land yet measured in Peninsular Florida. Yeah, I remember reading this now. Uh, by the government of the United States, it also is the highest land within 60 miles of the Atlantic Ocean and Gulf of Mexico between Washington and the Rio Grande. Pretty cool. So this is the highest point in Florida, at least when this part, um, when this was measured the last. There may be a higher point now. Who knows? That they might have found later. But pretty darn cool. And a beautiful view. You don't find a lot of high places in Florida. A lot of it's um, pretty darn flat. Okay. All right, that's it for today. I would have filmed more, but it was raining earlier. It looks really nice and sunny out now, but here in Florida, the rain will come up quick and quick and hard, and then it'll go away, and then it'll come back. I don't think it's going to rain anymore right now, but I decided to um, call it quits anyways. They're getting close to closing. I mean, I did a lot of walking around. It's really peaceful. I'll do more filming next time to get a chance to show you um, some of the other parts. Plus, all the times I've been there, there's actually some parts of um, Bach Tower Gardens that actually haven't been to yet. I need to, to like tour the mansion and stuff, but when I do I'll make sure I film it. But I'll be coming back and definitely filming more, showing you some of the awesomeness of this place. The pretty flowers and you get and you see some some of the wild animals in the wildlife and stuff like that, especially by window by the pond, which is pretty cool. Which I filmed before. But I always like, like I said I always like Bach Tower Gardens. If you ever get a chance to visit Central Florida, check it out. Um, if you live here, make sure you check it out. And if I was you I'd get um, like um, a year membership far better deal than getting a day pass in my opinion plus they have a reciprocal program but there's a lot of other places like other gardens and I think zoos and stuff I think you get like um, either get in there for free or you get a certain amount off admission um, if you want any to be more exact information with that uh, call Bach Towers you can ask them about their reciprocal program but uh, it's definitely worth in my opinion to get a year pass Okay, um, any comments, questions, please put them below. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope everyone has a nice day. And check out my channel. I have a ton of um, touristy videos like this. That's Bach Towers, Disney. I do historical places, um, museums. I do food review videos. I do just a whole boatload of different stuff. And um, check out my channel. If you like it, uh, please subscribe. All right. Thank you, everybody. Hope everyone has a nice day. Bye, everybody. Bye.